Welcome to TriMet 101. I am wearing the wrong shirt, but today we're going to be talking about not Portland, but Seattle. So, you want to visit the coffee capital of the world? Taking transit just might be your best option. For visitors, for residents, for anybody. They have a really good system. If you arrive by train, well, you're in luck as you're already in downtown. And pretty much just around the corner from the King Street Rail Station is the Orca office where you can pick up one of these. It's, well, Orca, their fare card system. Get one of these, it's a reloadable plastic card if you're gonna spend multiple days there. If not, then you can still buy a day pass from the ticket machines at the link stations, but I definitely recommend getting one of these as it's easier to use across the whole region rather than just King County Metro or whatever those tickets would be valid for. It just makes things so much easier. In fact, I actually don't think they look like this anymore. I think they updated the design, but I'm pretty sure these still work. And so if you have an old one, I'm pretty sure they still work, but the design has changed. So don't expect them to look like this anymore. Orca is amazing. This is not an advertisement for it, but it works on King County Metro, Sound Transit, Pierce Transit, Community Transit, Everett Transit, the Seattle Monorail. I think it even works on the ferries. Seattle, Tacoma, Bellevue, Everett, Linwood, Federal Way, Shoreline are all accessible from one fare card. It is amazing. Coming from the airport, your journey is not as easy, but to get to the Orca thing, all you have to do is go to the SeaTac link station and buy a paper ticket. It, it doesn't need to be for long, maybe just a couple hours. Get yourself an Orca ticket, just a paper ticket, and take the train to International District Chinatown. And then all you have to do is walk down Jackson Street to the Orca card office, and again, pick one of these up and load some money onto it. Then you're free to experiment. Just try it out. Take the link to Westlake or something. There's a big mall there. The Westlake station is my favorite of the tunnel stations, although I have not actually explored the Capitol Hill or any of the stations that opened in 2021. I didn't, I haven't really explored any of those, but the Westlake station is more or less a station in the basement of a mall, and it's really cool how it's set up. So you could check that out. You could check out anything you want. If you find 3rd Avenue, take a bus. Don't get stranded. Be careful. I'll talk about this in a second. But Seattle runs a lot of routes. King County Metro and especially Community Transit run a lot of peak direction routes that go into downtown Seattle in the morning and they go away in the evening. So if you're taking bus service, just do the research first before potentially getting stranded somewhere. But something I definitely recommend trying are the trolley buses. They're purple, they're unmistakable. You have to try these. I definitely recommend the Route 7 because sometimes, sometimes they use articulated trolley buses on these and it runs super frequently. And you, there's no way to get stranded. Like I said, it runs really frequently both directions. Just try it out, take it onto Rainier Avenue somewhere and just enjoy the insane electric propulsion that can get you up to speed insanely quickly. Articulated trolley buses aren't really all too common in the U.S. Really only San Francisco is the only other city to have them. So it's pretty cool to actually be able to try them out. And like I've said before, they are fun. Next stop, Bell Street. So, what's the first thing most people think of when you think Seattle? Probably this trophy, I mean the Space Needle, right? Yeah, this is probably going to be the first destination you're going to want to go to, to at least look at. So, let's talk about how to get to the Space Needle via transit. From the Chinatown Link Station, Bus Line 1 
gets you pretty close, and it's a trolley bus ride. Or if you board at the island platform there at 4th and Jackson, routes 24 and 33 actually get you a little closer. The monorail can get you there as well, but you're kind of doing it backwards, but I'll tell you how to do that as well. All you have to do is take the link to the West Lake Station, go into the West Lake Mall all the way up to the top floor, and you can get into the monorail from the West Lake Mall. And then the only other station on the monorail is Seattle Center, which is where the Space Needle is. I think that's meant to be the return trip. You're probably meant to visit the Space Needle first and then ride the monorail, but eh, nobody will know. Routes 3 and 4 are also an option and are also trolley bus routes, but there's a little bit of a caveat. So firstly, you take the link train to Pioneer Square, and then you board the bus at 3rd and Columbia. But I would personally ask the operator, do you serve the Space Needle? Because I'm pretty sure there are some trips on both buses that are just downtown only and don't go that far. So I would just ask the bus operator just to make 100% sure that it does go by the Space Needle. If all else fails and you need some, and depending on what side of town you're coming in on, Route 8 is another pretty good option that goes on Denny Way. And that goes right along, I mean, the, the Seattle Center is right off of Denny Way. So that's another option depending on what side you're coming from. Pike Place Market time. So the way that I would recommend, although it is kind of a lot of walking, is to take the link train to Westlake. Feels like I've said that before. Then you just simply walk down Pike or Pine Street until you get to the end of Seattle where the Pike Place Market is. It might be easier to actually take bus service to 3rd Avenue and Pike or Pine, or even 3rd and Union Street, but the choice is yours. I found this cool city viewpoint where you can look at the downtown Seattle skyline from, from afar and get some cool pictures of it. You can ride transit in a triangle. So here's how I did it. I took the link to the Beacon Hill station, then you go up to street level. This is that one random underground station in the middle of the alignment. And then you just board a Route 36 bus back to downtown. It is a trolley bus, so look for purple buses. And exit at Charles Street and Golf Drive. If you exit at that stop, there's this bridge that goes over I-90, I believe, and the link tracks, and you get a really cool view of the city skyline. Then to get back to downtown, what I did is I just walked across this bridge to the other side, and you just board another 36 to downtown, the same direction, and you're back in downtown, and you've basically drawn a triangle because the link goes from downtown kind of over to Beacon Hill, then you're taking the 36 up a little bit to the viewpoint, and then it goes the rest of the way, and then down Jackson Street back into downtown. Bellevue time. If you're watching this far enough into the future, this information is going to be outdated, but whatever. On 2nd Avenue, I will explain 2nd, 3rd, and 4th Avenues at the end of this video. Don't get too hung up on this, but 2nd Avenue, you've got some southbound sound transit buses. If you take the 550, then it goes to Bellevue, and that's pretty much it. I've already been on this bus before, and I'll put a card up here if you want to preview what that looks like. But yeah, you just hop on, and it takes you to Bellevue. It's a nice and fairly quick way to get to Bellevue. It's pretty amazing how close together those cities are. And the route also features two tunnels on the interstate, which is pretty interesting. However, in the future, after the Line 2 link train opens, then it will just be a simple light rail ride and then you can just exit at the downtown Bellevue station. Bellevue is quite an underrated city. I would definitely put it on your bucket list if you want to check it out. If you go to the Bellevue Transit Center or downtown Bellevue or whatever, then you'll see what I'm talking about. You've got some big high-rise towers and it seems like Bellevue is entirely under construction in the downtown area, so be warned of that. But, 
it's kind of cool because Bellevue doesn't actually have that many people. I think it's around 200,000 people, and yet there are high-rise buildings in this small area of downtown. But there's not a whole lot of people walking or like a lot of where it's really busy. So you've got all these dense buildings, and yet it's about as busy as some quieter cities. It's very interesting. And there's also this large mall, I believe it's called Bellevue Square, which is also pretty cool to explore and has kind of a weird history. So I would check that out too. To me, and I've only been there once, Bellevue has the density that makes it great and it feels fairly relaxed, at least from when I was there. And I hope it stays that way. If you take Route 550, it runs every 10 minutes during the weekday peak hours. It runs every 15 minutes off peak, runs every 15 minutes on Saturdays, and it runs every 30 minutes on Sundays for some crazy reason. Double decker bus time. If you have never been on a double decker bus, this is a must. You must do this. The easiest way by far to ride a double decker bus is to take the link all the way to the Northgate station, which is, at least currently, the northernmost terminus there on the link light rail. Exit at the Northgate station and board bus 512 to Everett. You catch this bus directly under the link tracks. And over 90% of all trips on the 512 are double-decker buses. Those are pretty good odds. And if you take the whole thing, it ends up in Everett and ends up at the Everett train station, which is serviced by Amtrak and the North Line Sounder trains. And they have public restrooms there, as I used. Yeah, TMI, I know. The 512 runs about every 15 minutes on weekdays, and oddly, it runs every 10 minutes on Saturdays, and also briefly runs every 10 minutes on Sundays. So the schedule's kind of weird. Around 3 o'clock it begins to do that. So it's kind of weird, but at least it's frequent. There's another way you can do this as well, though, where you'll be on double-decker buses for longer. Route 510 is very similar to the 512, but it starts clear in downtown Seattle. But it only runs peak direction during the rush hour. So what you'd have to do is get on the 510 in downtown Seattle, take it all the way to Everett, and then take the 512 back to Northgate, and then hop on a link train back to your destination. Community Transit also runs double-decker buses, and they were actually first. If you choose to ride Route 402, they seem to run most often on that route. But be warned, this bus, the 402, begins in downtown Seattle, and it goes to the Linwood Transit Center, and it doesn't come back. It's single direction only. However, if you take it all the way to the end at Linwood Transit Center, lucky enough, the 512 that I've been talking about also serves the Linwood Transit Center, so you can actually take that back to Northgate, so you can choose to do that. I've never been on Community Transit's double-deckers, but it is something I will very likely try the next time I'm out there. The thing is, I'm going to caution you on something. I wouldn't just hop on any old double-decker bus that you see in town. I really wouldn't recommend that because there is a chance that you get stranded at some random park and ride that's not serviced by anything, and I wouldn't really want to chance that. So my safe bets would be the 512 all day, no matter what, seven days a week, or during the rush hour, the 402 or the 510, taking it to the very end and then taking a 512 back. Anything else, I don't know if I'd really recommend it without doing some research first about the schedules and that sort of thing. So now let's talk about some events. Let's say you're about to watch a game, for example, or any sort of major event that takes place at the stadiums right in downtown. How do you get there? Well, it's actually really, really, really easy. If you have a game or an event that you're willing to watch at T-Mobile Park or Lumen Field, well, it's already basically in downtown. It's by the Chinatown Link Station, and you can just walk there. However, let's talk about the sounder trains for a quick second. Sounder trains only run on weekdays 
and they only run during the weekday rush hour. Except when there are major events that go on, there are actually extra sounder trains that will run even on a Sunday, for example, that take you into downtown Seattle. So all you have to do is look at the schedule. I recommend, well, actually, you can just look at Sound Transit's website and see and change the calendar date to whatever the game day is. And it'll show the schedule on there. There are usually two South Line trains, one right behind the other, and there will be a North Line train as well. And sometimes the second or the first or whatever South Line train actually goes express for some little bit, serving some stations and skipping others. It's the only sort of express sounder train that exists. Now the schedules usually only list when the trains go into Seattle and they don't list when they go away from Seattle just because it might be unpredictable when the event is over so if I imagine the trains leave whenever they need to leave whenever it would make sense for them to leave. Now this is something that has piqued my interest because I've done it in Portland before and it doesn't really have anything to do with transit but downtown Portland has the Shanghai tunnels and they offer tours down there and I think the history is fascinating and the fact that there is an underground tunnel system throughout pretty large stretches of downtown Portland well Seattle has the same thing and I picked this up the last time I was in Seattle it's called Beneath the Streets and guess what it's right in downtown by the Pioneer Square Link Station. So if you want to check that out, then they have that. We didn't actually do the tour uh, when I was there because I didn't even realize it until the, the day it was time for us to head back to Portland. But I will try and do it next time. So let's talk about some nerdy transit stuff now. So are you on the hunt for those trolley buses? Well, there's a pretty easy way to do that. This is not an advertisement or anything like that, but if you download the Pantograph app for your phone, you can check where the buses are. If you zoom in on the Seattle region, look for the purple buses. If they're purple, then they're trolley buses. Look for those. You can also check for other things like Proterra electric buses, New Flyer electric buses, motor coaches. There are still some Gillig Phantom buses running that are from 2008 that I would highly recommend trying out. I've never been on them, but they're the last ever Gillig Phantoms ever produced. 2008. High floor buses in 2008. The Link light rail is an ever-expanding system, and I might leave a link, a link in the description to the page of Sound Transit expansion and exactly what they're doing and when they expect certain lines to open and what the future system map would look like. It's quite impressive and it's a very long-term vision going clear into the 2040s. So that's something I might leave a link to if I remember, hopefully I will, but I probably won't. So last thing I'd like to talk about are some of the major corridors in downtown Seattle that have transit on them and how transit works on them. I'm purposely leaving out some things, but for the most part, these are your rule of thumbs. Rules of thumb. What, however the saying goes. Third Avenue is the main drag. Third Avenue is a two-way street with two lanes in each direction, which for several hours throughout the day are meant for buses only. And I think for the most part, people respect that and Pretty much seven days a week, you're going to find just buses on 3rd Avenue. Most of the routes which go into downtown Seattle use this corridor, and all the local routes use this corridor. It's absolutely insane, and if you've never seen it for yourself, it's just a never-ending stream of buses. It's absolutely amazing, and it's so interesting, in fact, that other people have made videos where they just stand in one spot on 3rd Avenue and just film buses going by and it's just non-stop activity. It's pretty wild. If you're taking more of the regional or express buses that go to other cities like Tacoma, Federal Way, Bellevue, or anything like that, then 2nd and 4th Avenues are what you'll use for that. Now these are one-way streets and 2nd Avenue faces south and 4th Avenue goes north. So depending on what direction you're going, those are the streets you're going to use. 
So if, for example, like from earlier, you're taking the 550 to Bellevue, you'll board on 2nd Avenue, which goes southbound, and eventually it crosses over and goes to Bellevue. But when you come back from Bellevue, you'll be going and facing north, and so you'll be dropped off on 4th Avenue. So that's how that works. So 3rd Avenue is local buses, 2nd and 4th Avenue are express and regional buses, and 2nd Avenue goes southbound, 4th Avenue goes northbound. These are more heavily used by community transit and sound transit, but there are some King County routes that use these as well, but no sound transit or community transit routes use 3rd Avenue. There's also the Pike and Pine Corridor, which is also used by multiple buses that travel east-west through downtown, including a trolley bus route, the 10, which I always forget about because I think I've only seen it once and I've never been on it. But yeah, those are different ways of getting around. And the Pike and Pine Corridor can also connect with other destinations further out, like with the streetcar that goes up into the Capitol Hill area, you can get through there with Pike and Pine Streets as well. So those are more pretty important corridors. I'm sure there's more stuff to talk about, like Rapid Ride. I didn't even touch on Rapid Ride. You gotta try out Rapid Ride with their jingle that plays at every single stop. But then this, if I talked about everything cool that Seattle has to offer, this video would go on until tomorrow morning. But I don't want that to happen, so anyways, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you next time. Ah.